I assume you have a rough idea of what the inquiry is. So tell me, what does the inquiry start with? Questions. Questions? Okay. An answer to the previous question which may lead to another question. Pardon me? Answer to one question which may lead to another question. Okay. A question may lead to an answer. And the answer itself may lead to another question and so on. So inquiry is a kind of unending process. Typically a good inquiry question, the answer to that question leads to other questions. In fact, it can lead to many, many questions. Okay. Does, uh, what is the relation between questions and conclusions? What, what else does inquiry have? Method to solve questions. Okay, so you need a methodology to come up with the answer. And the answer will arise, give you a conclusion, right? What do you do when you have a conclusion? Justify it. You have to justify it. And when somebody gives you a conclusion with justification, what do you do? Analyze it. Analyze it and evaluate it. Yes. Right? You have to critically evaluate your own conclusions. You also have to evaluate somebody else's conclusions. Okay. For critical thinking. Okay. That's a reasonably good idea of what inquiry is. I want all of you to say blue, green, blue, green, everybody. Blue, green. Okay. Then I want you to say green blue. Green blue. Okay, now I want you to say blue, green, green, blue. Blue, green, green, blue. Okay, faster. Again, keep saying. Faster. Green, green, blue. Faster, faster. 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 Not the speed. Much faster. Do you experience some difficulty? Yes. yes. What? Time twister, yes. right? So by the time you say it, you know, about six times, blue, green, green, because it doesn't work. Okay, so this is a time twister. What that means is if you say it fast, your tongue gets like this, right? I want you to say something else. Um, I want you to say blue blue. Blue, 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 blue. Then I want you to say green, green. Okay, blue, blue, green, green. Faster. Okay. Was that difficult? No. No. Okay, so this is not. So the first one, first one is a time twister, the second one is not a time twister. So one of the first things in scientific inquiry is when you find something of this kind, this is a time twister, this is not a time twister, we want to know why. The words are the same, right? Why is it that this is a time twister, this is not a time twister? Okay? This is the beginning of scientific inquiry. So if you drop something, it falls down in a straight line. A scientist would ask, how come? Why doesn't it Rotate. fall down in a spiral? Why doesn't it stay put? Or why doesn't it do this? All right? Why doesn't it come down like this? These are logical possibilities. Why not? And that kind of question, right? how come or why, is the beginning of scientific inquiry. It's one of the starting points. So we want to know why. If you, look, if you look at this carefully, what did you say? You said blue, green, green, blue, 
blue, green, green, blue, blue, green, right? And here you said blue, blue, green, green, blue, blue, green, green. What do you find? You find repeated instances, two instances of this. You said exactly the same thing, right? You said exactly the same thing, yet you found this difficult and this easy. Isn't that surprising? So the obvious question is, this is very puzzling. This requires an explanation. What I want you to do is to come up with an explanation. You're not going to find this in any textbook. All right? So you cannot find the answer by looking it up in the internet. You cannot do, you can do a Google search, fine, but you're not going to find it. You're not going to find it in any of the textbooks. You're not going to find it in any of the research articles. And nobody, except some of us here, in fact, even we don't have a clear idea of what the answer is. Okay? I don't really know. So I want you to figure out an answer to a question where I don't know. I have some ideas, but I don't really know. I'm serious. So come up with an explanation. An explanation that you're going to construct should be of the following form. They should be in terms of clear statements. So you should have statement one, statement two, etc. You can have one statement, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter. It'd be like, for example, you know Newton's laws of motion, right? Everybody knows Newton's laws of motion? So what's the first law? Law of inertia. Law of inertia, how do you state it? Okay. Everybody knows that. What's the second law? All right. And the third law? Yes. And then Newton also has a law of gravitation. Newton has uh, definitions of force, mass, acceleration. So given these laws and the definitions, you can conclude what will happen. Given the laws and the definitions, it will tell you that if you drop something on the Earth, it will go down in a straight line. It will not come in a spiral or in a zigzag path, or it will not stay up and so on. Right? And if I throw it like this, what will happen? Right? It will also hit one of you, likely. Right? Does Newton say that? Oh, this, is, this doesn't come from Newton's laws of motion. OK, because Newton was not interested in people. He was interested in things. That's why. OK. Um, so if you have these things, the laws, laws and definitions, you will have certain logical, okay? You will have some conclusions, logical, what is called logical consequences. And these are called predictions. A scientific explanation predicts certain things, right? A prediction is a logical consequence, such as if these things are true, this will be the consequence. And these predictions match observation. So what I want you to do is, here is your observation. This is difficult, this is easy. That's your observation. I want you to set up a theory such that, given these statements, you will get this result. Everybody clear? Okay, so I want you to construct a scientific theory to explain the results of the experiment that we did just now. Experiment with a bunch of humans. Of course, if you want to do real experiments, you can't do this with so many people together in the same room. Okay, you have to take each of them one at a time, take them to a lab, make them do this, etc. But we don't have the time for that, so we'll do a sloppy experiment. All right, so what I want you to do <laughs> is to form small groups, two or three people together, all right? Figure out an explanation, talk, and then I'm going to ask you. We'll write up the explanation on the blackboard. 
Everybody knows what we're supposed to do? Okay. So form groups come up with an explanation, and then we'll find out whose explanation is the best one. And we will take that as the truth until it is been disproven. All right, go ahead. So you're saying, if, can you state it as a law? Can you state it as a law which says, under such and such conditions, pronouncing is difficult? Say if the same, same, uh, same pronunciations uh, occur after certain regular intervals of time. Yeah, but he has already suggested the idea of grouping, right? So he said, this is the grouping. And uh, under such certain kinds of grouping, pronunciation is difficult. Can you make that statement as a law? When the same words come together, uh, it becomes easy to pronounce. Okay, hold on. You're saying, when the same words come together, right? That is, you have already said group. So, we can, can we say, when the words in a group are the same, it is easy, right? So that explains why this is easy. Why is this difficult? Because two different words have uh, come together. So we have to constantly change the tongue. <coughs> so when the words in a group are different, it is difficult. This is the converse of the first one, right? Hold on, hold on. Let me check if this is what he wants to say. This, this is this is the theory, right? So let me invite your attention to something. This is what we will call call it theory theory A. Theory has two components. One, it says something about the way the sequence is grouped, right? Even though the sequence is the same. This looks almost the same, but the, the idea is this is a group, this is a group. Whereas here, this is a group, this is a group. And then it states the law about the grouping and the difficulty level. Right? So if we pronounce the first one as blue, green, green, blue, blue, green, green, blue, blue, then that will not be attached. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. You are, you are now giving the counter evidence for the theory. But before I deal with counter evidence, I want to check if there are other theories. Okay. I tend to confuse when we get reverse symmetries or totally distinct things that are not symmetric through our senses. This means the output malfunction that must be I I have write it down. On the board.
Now, notice a slight difference in the way Jatin uh, formulated this. I don't, I don't think I fully understand your law, but let me pick out some of the characteristics. He's talking about the mind. Notice here, there is no mention of the mind. The grouping is assumed to be there in the physical space. You think it is there in the physical space? No. The grouping is in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. So here, the grouping, actually, implicitly, the grouping is in the mind. So this is a theory of the mind, not a theory of things out there in the physical reality. Physical reality is the same. Okay, so a computer, chances are the computer will not have any difficulty in saying either of those things. It's a human mind that creates the difficulty. And he says something about symmetry. Except I don't fully understand. I mean, these are important parts of the formulation. But he has put it in a way that I find it difficult to understand. So I'm going to ask him to explain it to me. But I'm not going to do that now because it's going to take some time. So explain it to me later. But in the meantime, to, to increase our speed, let me find out if there are other alternatives. Yeah. So in the first case, we say blue, green, green, blue. So we have two halls, after blue and then after the second green. Uh -huh. And in the second case, we say blue, blue, green, green. So we have only one halt. One halt. Yes. So halt is like, there is a halt here. Blue, green, green, then blue. No, the first one we said blue, green, green, blue, right? So where is the halt in the first one? If we uh, group it like that, blue, green, green, blue, then blue, green, green, blue. So where is the halt? After blue, for after Here, there is a halt here? Yes. Actually, you should say it first. Blue, green, green, blue, blue, green, green, blue is what you what say. What did I ask you to say? You said, say blue, green, right? And then I said, say green, blue. So what was I trying to do when I said, say blue, green, say green, blue? So where was the halt? There was a slight halt here, right? And then there was a slightly bigger halt here. And here I said, say blue, blue, right? and say green, green. So can you, is the, you're pointing to the, the pauses, right? When you say halt, you mean slight pause. But I'm not pointing to uh, that pause. Huh. I took it blue, green, green, blue, that. Oh, your new one. You are suggesting a different grouping. Three, blue. Green, green. Green, green. Blue. blue then blue, green, green, blue. Blue. Green, green. Green, green. Blue. blue. So this is your grouping. So one, two, one, one, two, one. That kind of. So you're suggesting a different experiment. Okay. So you want to design a new experiment to find out what will happen if you did that. So you're assuming. Maybe it has something to do with grouping. You want to do a different grouping and find out the results. Excellent question to ask. Okay? But this is what I want you to think about. When you design an experiment, you must have some reason for designing it this way. Right? So you must have an implicit theory to design it in a certain way, and you want to test that theory, right? So think about what is the question What is the question that you want to address when you design this experiment? Can you reconstruct that? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Right? So don't design experiments blindly. Okay? Don't say, let me change this and see what happens. Of course, some people do that. But a more interesting way of doing science would be to look at the facts and say, this is what I think is going on. This is what the theory I think is. And that if that theory is right, the results of the experiment would show such and such, right? So what do you expect to see in this? If I did this experiment, what would you expect? Would this be a time twister or not a time twister? Um, is it that you are thinking of a new experiment, or are you thinking of a new experiment? Both. 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 Both.
are you interpreting the earlier thing as a different with a different meaning? Which one is it? So, in other words, did you hear it as blue, green, green, blue? Oh, I see. She's talking it's about the first experiment. interpretation rather than looking for a new. Oh, okay. But is that the way the first experiment was conducted? No, okay. The first experiment was very clearly, I said, blue, say blue, green. And then I said, say green, blue. Then I said, say blue, green, green, blue. Right? That's the way it was rigged. So, it was rigged as blue, green, and green, blue. And together, it formed a new one. Hands. So what were the other theories that we had? Yeah. Sir, uh, I think that if we notice properly, then uh, <coughs> in the first group, then in the first experiment, it is blue bean, and then in the second group, it has green blue. Mm -hmm. uh, I have observed that in all the tongue twisters, uh, if we repeat the same pronunciation twice, then it is very difficult for us. So, sir, see, uh, the first group ends with green, and the second group begins with green. So okay. I want you to articulate this as a theory or a theory B. Right? You agree that this is here, these two together form a group and so this is representation. Now you obviously have some other law. Can you state the laws? Or the law that governs this? Sir, sometime. Yeah? Sometime I'll need to think on it. Okay. Come up with the law that it's only then that you can test your theory. Right? State your theory explicitly so that everybody can test it. Yeah. So, sir, so if you make sets of two in uh, each group, and if the set of uh, that set of two has same elements, or uh, if uh, the next set has the same elements, means uh, blue, blue, green, green, blue, blue, green, green, or blue, green, blue, green, then it is simple for our uh, mind as well as the tongue to pro pronounce and interpret it. Okay, that's a very long thing. Can you state it as a single law? <laughs> The, what I want to find out is if your theory is different from this. Is it different or is yeah. it the same? A uh, bit different because he told that in the same group if different elements are there, then it's difficult. And if it is the same element, then it's simple. it is easy. But uh, if you see the uh, differentiation, blue green, blue green, then huh. it's simple. So it contradicts the theory. It contradicts. Yeah. Because uh, in, in a pair of two, blue green, the, Elements are different. Yeah, if the elements are different, it is difficult. If the elements are the same, it is easy, is what the first theory said. What does your theory say? Just in contradiction, I told like, blue green, blue green. The oh, okay, you're saying blue green, blue green. That means it's con it contradicts the theory because in a set of two, uh, elements are different. Okay. It's simple. Okay, so you're saying. This theory, what do you expect if you have this one? This is number four. That uh, we Would can that be easy it or difficult? He is saying that it is easy, so that's why it's uh, contradicting the first statement of theory. Yes. This will be, you're saying you're designing a new experiment like her. You're designing a new experiment, and you're saying if you conduct this experiment, you will see that that will be easy, right? But this theory, this theory, Sorry, this theory, second part. If they are different, this says if when the words in the group are different, then it will be difficult. But this is easy. So this is a you know this word? Counter example. Now say blue green blue green. Faster, faster. Easy. All right. So this is how science works. It looked as though this theory correctly explained these two things, but it doesn't result. It doesn't explain the results of the this experiment. Yeah. So from this, uh, from his his point. I would like to conclude that if the symmetry is maintained, then it is easy to say the words. Whereas if the symmetry is changed, like blue green, green blue, right. then so it is difficult. That's the point that he was making. Except I couldn't understand what you were saying. I right? So the two of you.
team up and come up with a theory that we can test. Right now, I cannot test it because it is stated in a way that is difficult to understand, right? Even for <coughs> So, I think the theory is probably right, and symmetry is important, right? But Sir? you figure out, work together and come up with a theory, yes. Sir, if you modify the statement as uh, with similar content or pattern, uh, it is easy. Similar content and pattern. Or pattern. Uh, you have to tell me what the law is. A so this will be, I, I still don't know what theory B is. What, state the law. A group of words with similar content or pattern are easy to remember. When you say similar content. Or pattern. It's like blue, blue, green, green. Yeah. That similar content, after grouping, we or get blue, green. So when you say blue. content, you mean which word? Huh. Right? When you say pattern, what do you mean? Blue, green, blue, green. It is repeating. Right. It's the same. So this is not repeated, but this is repeated. Yes. Hmm. All right. Uh, let me write that. Group of words with similar content. When you say you say similar content or the same content, this blue is the same as this blue here. Similar. Exactly the same words, right? But in for that third case, blue green, blue green, they are not same. So but the words, content. the content is the same. Yes. You're using the same words, right? You are using just two words, blue and green. So that it's a, no, it's a structuring that is. Sorry, different. I think what you're talking about is blue, blue, green, green is easy. Where the word blue is repeated. Yeah. Right. And by pattern, what he means is blue, green, blue, green. That whole thing is repeated. The whole group is repeated. Right. Is that what you mean? Yes. yes. So you're talking about <coughs> that part? No. No? no. Blue, green, blue, green, which is number four. Is number four is, yeah, blue, easy, green. Easy because the two groups, in, there are subgroups in this the group. This group and this group is the same. And That's what you mean by pattern. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So it's like this. You have x, x, y, y. Or x, y, x, y. Or you can have x, y, x, y. Or you can have x, y, y, x. Right? And what you want is this result. This is the one that is difficult. Hmm. This is not difficult. So why is this difficult, not that? That's, that's what your law should say. So you could appeal to you could state it algebraic. You can say something like if the word if the words are x and y, variables, what would be difficult? So can you state why this is difficult? Does everybody see what the problem is? I've not converted blues and greens into algebra. Because in the two groups, there is a slight similarity. Whereas in the other two groups, the two groups are either completely different, like in XX and YY. They're completely different groups, so there's no link to be formed. So we don't confuse those words with each other. And in the second group, in the second group, XY, XY. Okay, you have to give me just one, a law is just a one sentence statement. This is the discipline that you have to get. State the law as Newton's law, like one sentence, right? Or Boyle's law, one sentence. I just want one sentence. The two groups, if they are completely similar or completely different, then they're easy. So your theory says, if the groups are completely similar or completely different, then they're easy. Or completely different, then it is easy. Okay, are these things completely similar, completely different? Completely different. Why is this completely different? Because uh, the they are all x and y's. Yeah, but the, those two uh, and the the words are completely different. I'm talking about a group as x x and uh, the other group as y y. So x x is completely different from y y. And this is completely similar. And this is neither. 
I don't quite understand what you mean by completely different. No, but uh, in the third one, the, yeah. the words are the same, but the pattern is different. That's kind of similar to what he said. So it's not clear how I can apply your theory to this. So, I want you to think very carefully. If you want to become a scientist, you have to take things very, very clearly. Right? Your words have to be extremely clear, very precise, so that a computer will be able to do this. Anybody know computer programming here? No. So if you want to instruct a robot, or if you want to instruct a computer, you have to be completely explicit. Right? Let me give you an example. Everybody knows how to eat, chew things, right? All right, a Martian comes, you have exactly the same physiology, physiology, but the Martian has never eaten anything, okay? Now, you want to instruct the Martian, take a piece of chapati and chew. I am a Martian, tell me, how, how do you chew, you humans? Bite. Yeah? Bite the piece of chapati. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I take out a piece, is that chewing? Will I get any food into my mouth? I mean, into my stomach? Yeah? Put it inside the mouth? Yeah, okay. I put this chapati in my mouth. No, sir. Rotate what? Rotate the upper. I cannot rotate my upper jaw. It's fixed. Yeah? Lower jaw rotate it so like this. Okay, put it in my mouth. It's not true. Close my mouth. Okay? If I close my mouth, I cannot rotate it. Put the chapati between my teeth. Like that. Okay. You see the difficulty? Try to write a set of instructions to a Martian like this. You will see how difficult it is to be explicit and precise. That's what you have to do. Right? So imagine that you're giving these instructions to a Martian, a logical, rational Martian. <laughs> But no, no ambiguity, no anxiety. We will come back to this exercise later because this is, how, this is just the beginning. Let me leave you with this discom discomfort. Discomfort is this, there is some problem, some puzzle. And we are beginning to construct a theory, but we don't know how to do it. And we all feel uncomfortable. Like you have the sneezing coming and you are not able to sneeze, okay? That is excellent in scientific inquiry. That sense of discomfort is very good because it makes your mind think about new things. All right? So I'm going to leave you with the discomfort. When you study for examinations, there is no discomfort. You study and you know what it is, and you go take the examination, answer the questions correctly, you get 100 marks, and you forget everything that you have learned. It doesn't stay in the mind. This one, it bugs you. It bugs you when you're falling asleep. It bugs you when you are riding a bicycle. It bugs you when you are taking a shower. So that state of mind is when you do inquiry.